Welcome to another teardown. We got the Harmony H659. That's a pretty old Harmony remote. It's pretty impressive what it can do. All the much newer models are much better. Anyway, so this, uh. Yes, yeah, so this is the Harmony H659 remote uh, by Logitech, I believe, or maybe just by Harmony. Probably just by Harmony. Who knows? I really don't know. Oh, anyway, this is really old, but impressively still supported. You can just download the software and it works. Mind you, they haven't kept the remote databases up to date. So if you have a TV newer than this, chances are you're not, you're gonna have to step-by-step -step program it. But it lets you do that because it's got a sensor in it that lets you just transfer the remote to it. So it's still a universe remote, but I'm too lazy to do that at the moment. But yeah, so anyway, if you don't know what they are, to get the gist of it, let's see. the. Wait, is it? Oh, oh, huh, wrong size batteries. <laughs> uh. I'll just throw on some of these here. So the gist of it, oh Jesus, God, oh God, oh man. Oh. What? No, seriously, stop that. Please stop. Uh, okay. Uh, how do I? Mm, mm, uh, oh, okay, don't. Oh, here. Uh. So it's a remote that. Uh, what can do how many remote? Somewhere. Close. Hopefully, you can read it. Does the light do anything? Oh, there's a light. It's just not bright. <laughs> Ta da! Next! Next. Uh, okay. Anyway, so yeah, you press buttons and, uh, you know, watch TV. Um, okay, well. Uh, you get the idea. Anyway, it's got a bunch of buttons and it lets you pick certain things and then contextually other buttons do things. Quite, quite impressive. You can press off and it turns everything off. Maybe with the camera. Anyway, that's the bright emitter. Yay. So, you know, you set up scenes and then uh, you can use it in a real remote. Universal remote? Oh, whatever. It's quite impressive. Uh, oh, now the batteries won't pop out. <laughs> <coughs> Thanks, batteries. Oh, yeah, I meant to look up the year, but reviews of it don't have dates because apparently websites don't put dates on stuff. And then the, the Logitech website's not useful at all for that. But that's, I don't blame them for that a little bit. Just put a date on your article. Like, I guess cool schools and colleges still require you to cite things with dates, and you can't do it. So let's do a teardown here. Impressively, I already see more screws than I would expect for, you know, a remote, but whatever. We'll take off these two first. The battery pack looks a little separate, but it might just be the weird molding on the case. Forgot to check for recording in 1080p. We are, good. I'm kind of interested to find out what's in here. I mean, okay, there's going to be a remote <laughs> infrared thingy, little infrared LED, and there's gonna be one of those little ones that picks up light, and there's gonna be a little driver for the LCD, but you know, is it just, is it a chip or is it a blob type thing? You know, is it one single chip that does the whole process or is it a bunch of dedicated stuff? Because this is quite old. Hopefully it'll tell us the year when we get inside of it. Oh, and by the way, it's USB. You can, <laughs> that's what I meant to say about it being supported is you can just, you know, with the power of USB, in theory, pick what devices you have, and then suddenly the entire remote works. Oh, I broke some of the clips. But of course, you can sit there and step program it for anything not supported. All right, we're in. Maybe. We have it lift, aha, okay. Yeah, definitely all one piece. Oh, actually, no, kind of not. Oh. Well, there goes the front. This comes out. 
for some reason, after that, I don't want. There has to be some obvious reason why. Uh, oh. Is that seriously the only way they could figure out how to put a metal battery clip in was have this separate? I don't know. Anyway. Well, there's more to it than I thought, but not a lot still. Let's see if we can get the board out. Not too impressive if it's just backside here. What do we... Oh. Oh, there, there are screws. That would be why it's not just falling right out. Tiny screws go to the back by the battery. I actually really like that. They, you know, lock the board that's getting the shock of someone trying to shove batteries in the stupid battery mechanism. Okay. Whoa. No, I used to have a little extra layer. Must have something to do with it. So as expected, you get your nice see-through rubber membrane thingy with all the little carbon pads here. That's typical. Now I use this little covery thing. Is it bioluminescent? Or electroluminescent or something? Hmm. That would be really interesting. Huh. We'll get there in a moment. Alright, so main board time. <laughs> well, what do you know? So the device with USB in its name is a USB interface. Good. Simple. I like simple. We have to tear the sticker off this thing, which I can only assume is the main CPU. And here, I guess, is the main flash. Holy crap, is that a 1998 year? 98? This remote can't be that old, can it? Ah, no. Because if we go over here, 2004. That's still pretty old. And it's another 2004-28, so it's probably the actual manufacture date, and this is the board revision. Figure out where the 20th week of 2004 was, hee <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's still pretty old, but not too old. But yeah, that would explain why, uh, XP is the only, is the, is the newest operating system for it. It wasn't just a lack of support for Vista. It was just if Vista didn't exist. I'm struggling for an X-Acto knife, so I think I can just pick this off. Give me your contents. Razor blade sharper. Razor is in the name. Razor blade beats exacto. Let that be a lesson for ya, kids. Is there like a type of ASMR, but it's actually just someone subtly picking a sticker off something? That wasn't. Well, that's quite a bit. I see a microchip logo. Oh, it's a pick. Of course it's a pick. Pick 18LC801. So that's the everything of this. They're just using a micro, communicating directly with some form of flash here. Other than that, they have this large, I would assume, inductor. Transfer memory type thingy. Uh, passives. What? <laughs> Everything requires its own timing. 4 megahertz, 24, and then... Oh, actually, is it, if this has time, that might be real-time clock. I don't see a number. It must be on the glue side. So one's a receiver and one's a transmitter. Not too crazy. Oh, actually, wait, they're both transmitters. If we go down here, we've got... Let's say something logo, 39AD, SB86542S, something close to that. Oh, wait... I made a goof error. These two both transmit, but they do not receive. I forgot. You program it from the bottom. You know, you just shove the other remote at this point at the bottom and it detects. So here's our sensor, which will now not focus ever again. Here is our sensor. It also has a number, which I doubt I can read. I can keep making stuff up all day long. Looks like we found the programming header. Look at that. Yay. Yeah, other than this lone... Other than this lone LED at the top. Oh, and here's our nice... Oh, I wonder if this is like a... Nokia display or similar. This looks about the same form factor. 
as those old, uh, some sort of cell phone LCD display. I wonder if that is. Um, other than this lone LED, I wonder if this is, like, bioluminescent, because I don't see any more LEDs. The only thing to do is power it up. It screams at you. Well, it buzzes. Clearly it's electroluminescent, or whatever you want to call it. Problem is that I guess I can't keep enough pressure to push things down. My basic understanding is that some part of this, which we'll find out in the, the notes, generates a high voltage or a high frequency mainly that uh, can drive this electroluminescent or whatever you want to call it stripping. So I'm assuming, which I can't show because why would I be able to show you things, uh, the white ring parts of this will actually glow. And then thus that lights up this. It's a dull effect, but I guess um, that's what they had to do to get the brightness enough. Another interesting thing to note is that the center button on the pad here is actually glow in the dark. It's the only section that is. They could make the whole remote do that if they wanted. And I have a lot of remotes to do, but I guess they wanted to really show off that light button feature. So yeah, that's just a holdover relic-y thing from the past, having it be that instead of just a bunch of LEDs. Go figure. Now we get to see if it works by putting it all back together. On an understanding of quantum physics is required to keep the plastic piece in place while placing other plastic in the plastic pieces. Oh, did I mention this remote was like, I don't know, at least 100 or 125, I don't know, it was quite expensive when it was new. And I got it for maybe, you know, less than a dollar. Because to the thrift store, this is just a remote. And to me, it's becoming a real pain because I didn't know you could make battery compartments that don't hold batteries. Okay, the remote's alive. Now does the backlight work? Well, what do you know? You can hear it. But can you hear it all the time? No, so it only runs when it runs. That's really interesting. It's a very nice effect. It's a very good color. Uh, <laughs> in person, in camera, it's uh, not a great color. I mean, it's good, but it doesn't have the richness. That's been the only USB remote that I own. Well, that's been a look at the Harmony, which I guess was just its own thing at one point. Thanks for watching. Oh, stay on. Thanks for watching.